All right, another North Korea missile launch, but stocks are not reacting. Here now is Andres Garcia, CEO of Zoe Financial. So, Andres, investors clearly are classifying this as a non-issue. Uh, the markets aren't really reacting. This is the second missile launch over Japan, of course, in two weeks. So, clearly, the provocations are increasing. Yeah, I look at the situation in North Korea more as a global citizen because it's very hard to hedge or have an edge of how the market's viewpoint are going to react to each missile launch. So I try to take a step back and try to understand some historical context of how we got here mm. and if there's other examples in the past that we could kind of use as, as, as guidelines. Well, and you actually point out that China was sort of like this, you know, in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So I think people forget that prior to 1969, uh, China was or other, uh, use of, uh, lack of a better word, a rogue state. Hmm. And once it had a hydrogen bomb, it actually now kind of ex uh, asserted its independence, both from the Soviet Union and, and in essence, from any uh, outside pressure. And just three years later, Nixon was uh, visiting China, and little by little, we actually opened relations with a country that just a few years earlier was considered a rogue state. And look at them now. They're now the world's second largest economy. But is the worry with North Korea not so much a deliberate war, but some sort of policy mistake on either side. Absolutely. Uh, that is, in my opinion, the biggest risk is on force errors, hmm. right? If, if you're playing a game of theory where both sides are rational, North Korea wants to assert its presence from a global stage and say, we don't respond to uh, Russia, we don't respond to China, we don't respond to the United States. That doesn't mean that there could be some unforced errors in the way, and that is obviously something, as I said, that I can't hedge, and therefore I don't, I don't focus as much. So isn't it strange to have all these provocations, but yet stocks are at record highs? I mean, we're just points away from 2,500 in the S&P 500. We just got almost there a couple of days ago. So what do you make of these record levels? It's, it's really interesting because even prior to North Korea becoming kind of the topic uh, from a geopolitical standpoint, uh, if you look at geopolitical uncertainty index here in the United States, it was already moving up higher mm. with Trump being elected, even uh, even though in essence, well, more uncertainty, even though the markets kept going higher. So I think the market continues to focus on earnings, global economic momentum that is moving. In the so right we direction. can go higher from here, is what you're saying? Um, well, actually, I'll I'll take this step back. Short term, I think momentum will continue to reign. When you look three five years out, I am a little bit more. Um, cautious about the U.S. equity market. That long term, you're cautious. Yeah, yeah. I think the valuations are getting way ahead of themselves. And as I said, short term, that could still continue to happen. But three, five years out, I prefer looking at uh, emerging markets, next in line, mm. European equities, and then the, the U.S. equities. Mm. But still maybe has some exposure to the U.S.? Oh, oh, absolutely. Right. As a U.S. investor, you have some, uh, some exposure. It's just a question of how much within your asset allocation mm. you would have. And I think from our perspective, it's time to kind of trail some of that back. All right, trim some of those yeah. profits. Okay, Andres Garcia, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.